Why do some airports ban reverse thrust? Imagine the roar of a jet engine is so powerful, it can shatter windows, rattle homes, and literally reshape the ground beneath it. This isn't a scene from an action movie, it's the reality of reverse thrust. When a massive airliner lands, pilots can redirect the engine's blast forward, creating a braking force so violent it's essentially a controlled explosion aimed at the tarmac. For viewers living near airports, this isn't just an annoyance, it's a daily sonic assault. But noise isn't the only problem. That concentrated hurricane force wind can hurl debris like a shotgun blast, damaging the aircraft itself, shredding runway lights, and creating a dangerous environment for any ground crew. So the first and biggest reason for the ban is a simple equation. Immense noise pollution, plus a serious risk of infrastructure and aircraft damage. But the issues go even deeper than what we can see in here. That torrent of air from reverse thrust doesn't just vanish, it has to go somewhere. On a wet or icy runway, this is a useful tool to blow away slippery contaminants. But on a dry ramp or taxiway, that same force becomes a ground-level hurricane. It can blast the asphalt and concrete, literally scouring the surface and eroding the tarmac over time. Furthermore, that powerful suction can pull loose rocks, nuts, bolts, and other foreign object debris FOD, into the engine intake. An engine ingesting even a small piece of debris can cause catastrophic and incredibly expensive damage. For airports with tight gates, closely parked aircraft, or sensitive equipment, the risk of this self-inflicted damage is just too high, making the powerful tool of reverse thrust more of a liability than an asset in these specific areas. So if they can't use full reverse thrust, how do these giant birds stop? It all comes down to a sophisticated multi-layered braking system. Pilots rely on a combination of aerodynamics and mechanics. They use spoilers that pop up on the wings to spoil lift and force the weight onto the wheels, making the wheel brakes incredibly effective. Those wheel brakes themselves are high-tech marvels, often made of carbon composites that can absorb immense heat and energy. Combined with the simple friction of the tires on the pavement, it's more than enough to bring the aircraft to a safe stop. The ban on reverse thrust, therefore, isn't a safety compromise. It's a calculated decision that prioritizes community relations and ground safety over a single, brutish braking method. So, to bring it all together, airports ban reverse thrust not because it doesn't work, but because its power comes with too many costly side effects. It's a trade-off, sacrificing a loud and destructive braking method for the sake of quieter neighborhoods, safer ground operations, and the long-term health of both the airport infrastructure and the multi-million dollar engines themselves. It's a perfect example of how in modern aviation, brute force often loses to smart, sophisticated engineering.